Can supplements help non-alcoholic fatty liver disease? Hey, it's Joe Cannon from SupplementClarity.com and Joe Cannon, Jared-Cannon.com. And today I wanna to talk about that very topic. You probably don't give a whole lot of thought to your liver, but it's actually quite indispensable to our lives. And some people may be walking around with a condition that they don't even know they have called non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. It's actually quite serious. I actually know a few people who have this disorder and I've gotten some emails from people uh, recently who've asked me if any supplements can help this condition. And the answer is quite possibly yes. And so I wanna talk about the supplements to help non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, explain what this condition is, and talk about some other things that we should be doing as well to keep our liver nice and healthy. So let's jump right into this and see what we can figure out. So again, what is non-alcoholic fatty liver disease? It is kind of what it sounds like. Um, it is fat building up inside the liver that is not caused by alcoholism. And it leads to eventually, eventually the scarring of the liver, cirrhosis of the liver. So again, you don't have to be an alcoholic to get cirrhosis of the liver. Ultimately, this can lead to the failure of the liver and even liver cancer, pretty serious stuff. Um, and, and, and so that's another reason why I wanted to, I wanted to talk about this. Some, some things that will increase our risk of this disorder, well, being overweight um, as well as diabetic, type 2 diabetes, um, those can go hand in hand, being overweight and diabetic. Um, increased triglyceride levels in cholesterol, which again, some people with diabetes and being overweight tend to have. And the last to topic that I have here um, is rapid weight loss, very quick weight loss. That's actually quite popular these days. People are going on some very interesting diets to help lose weight quickly. Um, generally speaking, it's not recommended for you know a number of reasons, but one topic, one reason why uh, many physicians don't recommend it is it can put some stress on the liver and could actually lead to uh, this disorder as well as other things. So again, ra sometimes rapid weight loss products or rap rapid weight loss diets could actually lead to this uh, effect as well. So um, what kind of uh, seriousness uh, are we talking about here? Well, uh, we've got between 75 and 100 million people in America alone who have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. 66% um, of people over the age of 50 uh, with diabetes or who are overweight uh, tend to have this issue. Um, as many as 50% of people who die from this disorder die from either cancer or heart disease. And as I mentioned, most people don't give their livers too much thought. And so this kind of, again, flies below the radar. Um, so pretty serious stuff. Um, and again, there are no symptoms of this. Uh, and so you may be walking around with it and not even realize you have it. Uh, and that's, again, another reason I wanted to bring uh, this to your attention. So when it comes to helping your liver stay nice and healthy, we've got a couple uh, options for you. Well, we've got some uh, things you can do, uh, lifestyle changes, which I wanna talk about first, and then we'll get to the dietary supplements. And there are three supplements in particular I wanna call your attention to uh, and, and maybe you take a look at. Okay, so let's talk about the lifestyle uh, stuff first. Well, there is weight loss. That's right, weight loss actually can help uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. These researchers in this investigation noted that only a little bit of weight loss seemed to help. 4% um, of weight loss improved fatty liver, 7% or more weight loss decreased the inflammation of the liver. Again, inflammation is something that goes hand in hand with fatty liver disorder. And if individuals could lose 10% or more of their body weight, that actually reduced the scarring, the cirrhosis, if you will, of the liver. So it doesn't take an awful lot of weight loss to see improvements in this disorder. Um, that 10% of weight loss, again, if you took a look at my uh, video on reducing blood pressure, you notice I also call it attention how losing a little bit of body weight, uh, 5 to 10% could also decrease blood pressure as well. Okay, what kind of weight loss programs are we talking about here? If someone were to go on a specific diet, well, um, there are three out there that actually have some uh, evidence, and we've got a vegetarian plant-based style eating program. Um, again, eating more fruits and vegetables and beans and seeds tend to have a greater efficacy on, on liver health. Okay, makes sense. There's a lot of plant-based uh, antioxidants and other nutrients uh, in these types of foods. We've also got the Mediterranean diet, which appears to have a protective effect as well. NASH, uh, you notice here I've highlighted in yellow, NASH is essentially uh, fatty liver disorder on steroids. It's the next progression, if you will, of this disorder, uh, which again is even more worse than what we're talking about. But they all kind of, uh, they're always on a spectrum of each other. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease eventually will lead to NASH. 
And then there is also some evidence that the DASH diet can help as well. What is DASH? DASH stands for Dietary Approaches to Stop Hypertension. And it is, as you can tell, a uh, dietary program that is designed to help lower blood pressure. Essentially, it's an eating program that involves a lot of fruits and vegetables, lean protein, uh, essentially low sodium and higher uh, potassium. So what we've got here on all three of these eating programs is essentially eating a more uh, plant-based based uh, diet. Um, so again, uh, other diets out there, I don't see any evidence for them. Uh, if you've seen the evidence of other uh, diets helping uh, not alcoholic fatty liver disorder, let me know. Uh, but these are the ones that I've seen. Now, in terms of the other thing that we could be doing, and that's exercise. Exercise does not doesn't take a lot to help the liver as well. Um, this uh, in this particular investigation looked at both aerobic exercise as well as resistance training, strength training, uh, and noted that uh, 40 to 45 minutes a week, three times a week, 45 minutes a day, three times a week for up to uh, three months uh, has been shown to improve liver health. And again, it doesn't take a lot of exercise here. Uh, you'll notice I have here METS, M-E-T-S. That's just, that stands for metabolic equivalence. And that's one way in which medical professionals will quantify how hard exercise feels for you. Essentially, here you see it says 4.8 metabolic equivalence. That means you're basically burning calories about 4.8 times faster than when you're sleeping. When you're sleeping, you're at one MET. And so you might be around one and a half to two METs watching this video, for a matter of fact. So it doesn't take an awful lot of exercise to see positive benefits on liver health. Now, let's leave uh, the lifestyle stuff away for a little while and let's talk about the dietary supplements. I have three of them here and I wanna show you the corresponding evidence for them. So number one we got is turmeric. It's actually uh, one of probably the most popular spice in the world. Turmeric and to curcumin are often said to be the same thing, but curcumin is an ingredient in the turmeric spice. And here is an investigation uh, from 2017, efficacy and safety of phytosomal curcumin in non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, a randomized controlled trial. Essentially, this was a two month long investigation where people got a placebo or 1000 milligrams um, of this thing called phytosomal curcumin. And they noted that those who were taking their curcumin had lowered, le lowered levels of, 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 of liver enzymes these are called aspartate amino transferase and yada 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 you know we usually abbreviate them as AST and ALT so if you ever check your blood test uh, from your doctor you'll notice you'll see it as AST and ALT those are liver enzymes and they tend to go up with liver issues okay so curcumin seemed to bring down liver enzymes uh, much more than say the control group which was about uh, what are we looking uh, a little bit under 5% versus about 75% improvement in the curcumin group this particular investigation used a specific type of phytosomal uh, curcumin called Mervia, which I'll link to in the comment section so you can check out what other people are saying. Phytosomal is a, uh, a term that essentially means they're increasing the absorption of the product. Curcumin and turmeric don't have a very good absorption uh, if you just take them by themselves. So by binding them to something else, you can enhance the absorption. And that's uh, what the phytosomal formulation does. In another investigation, um, treatment of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease with curcumin, a randomized placebo-controlled trial. Um, this investigation, again, lasted eight weeks, and they gave people 500 milligrams a day, which was the equivalent of 70 milligrams of curcumin, and they saw significant improvements in liver enzymes, body mass index, as well as blood sugar, and even what's something called glycosylated hemoglobin. Uh, for the diabetics watching this, that's called hemoglobin A1C kind of means sugar-coated hemoglobin. You don't want to have your hemoglobin covered with a lot of sugar because that could be bad for your diabetes. So if we can bring down the A1C level, bring down the glycosylated hemoglobin, then you can help the uh, diabetes get a little bit better, sometimes a lot better. Um, for instance, in this particular investigation, we saw that the hemoglobin A1C went from 6.31, which is, you're, you're getting out of the normal range, kind of in the normal range. So again, that's actually pretty good. Uh, fasting blood sugar went from 111 to 107. Total cholesterol, 198 down to 174. Bad cholesterol, LDL, went from 107 down to 95. And again, 199 to 173 for triglycerides. So some pretty good stuff going on here uh, with this particular product. Berberine. 
Berberine is another supplement, and I often see it for uh, in diabetes supplements, and, and that's because berberine is a blood sugar lowering uh, ingredient. And this investigation, again, fairly, uh, fairly large. We had 39 people in the placebo group and uh, 41 people in the berberine group. Those taking berberine uh, showed a greater decrease in blood fats uh, compared to those who basically just took the placebo, which was essentially a lifestyle intervention. So lifestyle plus the berberine seemed to do a better job than the lifestyle by itself. Okay, so again, berberine might be something to take a look at for non-alcoholic fatty liver disease as well. Um, again, didn't take a lot of berberine here. We're looking at about uh, one and a half grams per day in three divided doses taken before meals. Um, so not a whole lot, pretty, pretty low on the dosage scale for berberine. So. CoQ10, that's one of my favorite supplements uh, overall to be taking, especially as we get older, we tend to make less CoQ10. This is a compound, an antioxidant compound that actually helps us make energy. And here is an investigation uh, where 44 people with non-alcoholic non fatty liver disease, I keep butchering that word, um, it basically they took 100 milligrams of CoQ10 um, or they took a placebo for a month and they noted that those taking CoQ10 had lower levels of uh, liver enzymes and showed uh, some other improvements as well. But again, the fact that it's decreasing liver enzymes for this uh, video, that makes it significant for me. So I like, I like CoQ10 for a variety of reasons, okay? And uh, again, maybe perhaps take a look at it for this disorder as well. So um, another investigation of CoQ10, functions of CoQ10 supplementation and liver enzymes markers of systemic inflammation and adipokinins in patients affected by, again, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, eight level double blind placebo controlled randomized trial. Again, it's not, not a giant study, but 40 people um, getting 100 milligrams uh, of CoQ10. That's not a lot. Um, and they took it for, uh, what are we looking at? 12 weeks, three months. And they noted that there was decreases in liver enzymes, decreases in, in and inflammation, tumor necrosis factor, a uh, whole bunch of good stuff going on here. So didn't take a lot. Again, 100 milligrams, that's pretty much in a lot of supplements I see at the, at the health food store. So this is definitely uh, not, a, not a very expensive supplement either. Um, and again, there's different types of CoQ10. Just take the regular CoQ10, the one that's been around a thousand years, and you'll get a better price on it. So um, again, CoQ10, definitely on my list for uh, this disorder. Now, these were not the only supplements that I took a look at. Um, others that I, I'll give honorable mention to, if you will, are milk thistle, which is some people call it silly marin, vitamin D, fish oil, and flaxseed. I saw research on these, uh, these other ingredients as well, but it wasn't to the level that I felt comfortable enough saying, hey, these are the best supplements for, for fatty liver disease. They're all good supplements for different reasons, uh, and if you want to add them into your, uh, your, your regimen for this disorder, that's fine. Um, I just like the other ones a little bit better than these. Uh, Flaxseed, though, um, I, I actually like for a lot of reasons. I, again, if you saw the research uh, video I did on the lowering of, of blood, blood pressure naturally, uh, flaxseed actually seems to exert a blood pressure lowering effect uh, in people with hyperplension. So that's actually uh, something else I do like, generally speaking. But, you know, for fatty liver disease, eh, it's hard to say. I want to see more research on all of these first before I could give them two thumbs up. I'll, I'll give them right now maybe one thumb up and, you know, well, I'll, I'll I'll say, I'll, let me wait and see what other research says. So guys, that's what I got for you today. If you have any questions, leave a comment below and I'll be glad to help you myself. Until next time, I'm Joe Cannon. Have yourself a fantastic day.